Hey everybody, Russ Barkley back again. This is another Saturday review of research and I'm gonna go back by popular demand and we're gonna do a dad joke. So, I and here's your dad joke for the day. Why do fathers take along an extra pair of socks when they play golf? Being a golfer, I should know the answer to this. In case they get a hole in one. Oh God, that's that's bad. That's bad. Well, you asked for it, so you got it back. Uh, this week, uh, not so much research was published, but there were three articles I thought that might deserve some comments. The other articles that were published are over in the description for this week's research review. We're going to begin with a topic that I covered just a couple of days ago in a special commentary on internet gaming disorder and gaming addiction in children and adults with ADHD. This particular article comes out of Italy and it was published over in the journal Brain Sciences. And it's a study of a large population of youth who are typical, other youth who are ASD on the autism spectrum and youth with ADHD. The average age was about 14 years of age for these individuals. And uh, sample sizes were pretty good, about 77 on the spectrum. Uh, and there was about, uh, oh, let's see, 94 were ADHD and the rest, about 147, were typical controls. So uh, a pretty well done study. Usually internet gaming disorder, uh, and internet addiction are assessed using rating scales that have been developed for that purpose. Uh, and in this case, there is a cutoff point on the internet gaming disorder scale that you can use to establish that someone likely has this disorder. So what did they find? They found, get this, that in the ADHD group, over 72% of these Italian teenagers qualified as having IGD, internet gaming disorder. The rate among those on the spectrum was 45% with ASD qualified for a gaming disorder versus just 9.5% of those in the typical control group. So clearly, as I discussed in my last video, there is a substantial relationship between ADHD and risk of having either internet addiction or in this case, risk of having a gaming disorder. Now, what was interesting is they did some further analyses and they showed that while more of the teens with ADHD qualified for gaming disorder, the severity of the gaming disorder was much worse in the sample that had ASD. Uh, and they had greater problems with inattention than did the kids with ADHD or the typical kids. Uh, they went further to do some additional analyses that showed that if an individual had ASD, was on the spectrum for autism, they not only had a more severe gaming disorder, their gaming disorder was less likely to decline over time, meaning it was gonna be much more persistent and not just severe, than we see in the ADHD or in the typical group. So again, to summarize, gaming disorder is found more in ADHD than in autism spectrum, but they're both substantially elevated, anywhere from uh, oh, five to nine times over the rate seen in the typical control group in this study. But the disorder itself, gaming disorder is more severe in those on the autism spectrum. Okay, next up comes another study, this done by many of the same authors in the last study. This study looks at whether or not methylphenidate was effective in helping to reduce or eliminate internet gaming disorder or internet addiction in patients with ADHD. Uh, and they had 38 drug-naive patients. Most of them probably were in the last study. They all underwent an evaluation for addiction and gaming disorder. 21 of them were put on methylphenidate and 17 patients did not receive medication. They were then reevaluated three months later. What did they find? That while the level of gaming disorder and internet addiction did decline somewhat over time, 
there was no effect of medication on gaming disorder or addiction. That kind of contradicts what I, what I suggested in my last video where I said that some Chinese physicians had found that treating with methylphenidate did seem to help with gaming disorder. But that was just a clinical impression. They hadn't done any study like this group did comparing treated with untreated individuals. So it doesn't look like medication is going to be particularly helpful for gaming disorder or addiction in this population, at least as seen in this very small scale study. Okay, shifting attention now over to our last study. This one is a very large study on the genetics of ADHD and whether or not the genes for ADHD pose a causal risk for six other psychiatric disorders. Now, this study uses a huge genome-wide association study that involved more than 20,000 individuals with ADHD versus more than 32,000 without ADHD, and they went on to take a look at risk for other psychiatric disorders. Specifically, they were looking at risk for mood disorders, anxiety disorders, intellectual disability, and tick disorders, among others, in this population, as well as risk for autism spectrum disorder and for schizophrenia. What did the study find? It's a very complicated study. It uses a method for analysis known as the two-sample Mendelian randomization design. We're not, no need for us to go into that. The bottom line in the study was that they found that the genes that pose risk for ADHD increase the risk that an individual will go on to have either autism spectrum disorder or schizophrenia. They found that there was a nearly two and a half fold increase in risk for autism spectrum if these ADHD genetics were present. Uh, and they found that the risk of schizophrenia was about 1.8 times greater than in typical individuals. They found no causal association of the genetics of ADHD with tick disorders, intellectual disability, mood disorders or anxiety disorders. So very important study here showing some genetic causal connection between ADHD and autism spectrum and ADHD and schizophrenia. Now keep in mind, even though the odds ratios are high between 1.8 and 2.4 increase in odds of having either of those disorders in people with ADHD, Remember, the base rate for those two disorders is very low. So a doubling of the base rate would not be considered to be too drastic. In other words, the vast majority of people with ADHD are not at risk for either of these two disorders. So to give an example, if the rate of uh, ASD in the population is about say one out of every 33 individuals, which is about 3%. That's a very high prevalence, by the way, but let's just say it's 3%. If we double that, it simply means that 6% of people with ADHD had autism spectrum disorder. Do you see what I mean? So when you double the prevalence rate, it doesn't necessarily mean that most people carry that risk, but still very important study on the genetics of ADHD being linked to the development of autism spectrum and schizophrenia. Okay, well, that's it for this week. Sorry we don't have more. As I said, all the rest of the research is up in the description for this, uh, this particular video. Uh, again, as I always suggest, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't, so we can keep you up to date on any new postings. Uh, do recommend us to others if you like our content and you know people who might have an interest in following studies or evidence on ADHD in research or just learning more about ADHD. So thanks for joining me, everybody. Really appreciate you uh, showing up this week. And I'll be back next week with more commentaries and more research reviews. So be well, everybody.